Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, and my colleague, Russell Berger, with the Labor and Employment Group at Offit Kerman. And this week, we're circling back talking about COVID and mass mandates. So there's been some developments since we last spoke about the current regulations and things, and masks are largely going away at this point in most circumstances, with some limited exceptions. Um, I know, Russell, you've got kids, you're getting getting messages about, about masking. So what's the latest? Yeah, no, as you said, um, you know, mask mandates are going away for most, uh, in most work locales. Obviously, healthcare facilities are a little bit different still. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, most offices and other uh, work environments are no longer going to be subject to any mass mandates. I think, uh, you know, Baltimore cities uh, has ended or will be ending uh, on March 1st. Um, and, you know, other jurisdictions are, are right there. So um, that's good news. That means we've progressed uh, sufficiently through COVID that we don't think we need these mass mandates in place anymore. Um, so we should take a moment and pause and uh, enjoy that fact for a second. Two years in. <laughs> right, right. Two weeks to fly on the curve, and we and we now gotten rid of mass mandates after two years. Um, but so here we are, and and we thought it'd be a good topic to circle back on because you know it's a it's an important time to remember that um, you know people are still COVID is still out there. Obviously, it's not as prevalent. Um, there's um, you know greater immunity. People have been vaccinated. You know it's. There's better treatment, so it poses less of a risk. Um, so there's a lot of progress that's been made, but it's still out there. And the CDC guidelines are still, you know, if you're a close contact, you should still be uh, quarantining. Uh, if you're not up to date on all your vaccinations, and you should still be wearing a mask, um, you know, if you are up to date and you're a close contact. And then there, if you get COVID, they're still, you know, isolate for five days. And then recommended that if you do test and you test positive on day five, that you should um, stay out another five days. And and if you don't, uh, you come back to the workplace, you should wear a mask for days six through 10. So all that's still in place. Um, the CDC hasn't changed any of those guidelines yet. And I think those are really important for employers to remember. Yeah, so we're not throwing the, the COVID policies out the window at this point, but Definitely a, a, a change, a shift here, and um, still need to to be conscious of those requirements. I also have been seeing some businesses. So I live in Hamden, Baltimore City, and it's definitely a, this area of town. A lot of local businesses uh, have different feelings than the CDC does around masks, uh, more than the mayor does here in Baltimore City. So definitely still seeing some businesses that uh, may be keeping mandates in place for their patrons. Uh, or for their employees. So that's also something just to note is that, you know, if you've got a lot of employees that work in close proximity to each other, as you mentioned, that's, you know, COVID's still out there. There's still some considerations there. Um, I think that we'll largely see that go away, but, um, you know, it, it is within, you know, employers' ability to say that that safety equipment is still required. Um, you know, there's definitely some things to consider there from a practical standpoint, obviously, and, you know, depending on what your workforce, you know, what their risk tolerances are, what their, you know, if they're going to be frustrated with those things, those kinds of policies. Um, but also just, again, telling employees who maybe are at, at high risk or have at, um, high risk family members who may want to wear a mask, that it's acceptable for them to still wear them if they want to, still allowing those options. So still making sure you're communicating with your employees and, and uh, being mindful of those types of things as well. Right. Now, I wouldn't go around asking people who if they're high risk, but uh, but yeah, exactly. You know, making sure that people feel comfortable if they choose to wear a mask. Uh, I think that's a good policy. And like you said, I mean, I certainly I think this is an example we gave probably two years ago. Uh, you know, if you're in on the assembly line in a factory where people are tightly packed, you know, you may want to still consider having your own masking policy because, um, you know, it's. You frankly, if you're in food processing, you probably already have a mask policy. So, um, but you know, it's something to think about because you know there's still there's still risk out there. It's just not high enough that we need to blanket mandate it, um, which again is, is a pretty good thing. Um, the other thing that that comes to mind for me is that we may see an uptick in disability accommodation requests. So as the the 
you know, the world gets safer for most of us um, and we stop wearing masks and we start, uh, you know, living a little more and taking a little more risk, um, you know, it might inject more risk to someone who has a disability. So I wouldn't be surprised if people are asking for um, disability accommodations, maybe working remotely, maybe being in an area of the office where they're not around other people. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, and I definitely have seen a lot of those requests still coming in over the last couple of months, and I think we'll see them continue um, you know, for, for a long time as it relates to remote work, especially uh, since pe so many people were able to work remotely during the pandemic. It is hard to then deny that often in, as a accommodation request. So it's definitely something that needs a, a specific analysis on a case by case ba basis. So definitely something to pay attention to. And I'll say, you know, just personally, I flew recently and I don't know if I'm, I'm ever going back to not wearing a mask on a plane. So, you know, I think that those are, those are still required at this point. And so um, we'll see. That'll be, I mean, it's, you know, at some, some people's workplace and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if we go back to, to getting, catching a cold every time we get on a plane. Yeah, well, I mean, it's how I feel about the schools going, taking away their masks. Unquestionably, we're going to get exposed to more germs in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to have people, you know, more employees with cold, COVID-like cold symptoms. Um, so having a protocol in place to deal with that when it comes off, is going to be more important because, you know, if we're not wearing masks, if we're out there more, um, not necessarily, not just COVID, but more things are going to spread, more things are going to float around. Yeah. Well, fun times ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Russell. See you next time. Thanks, Sarah.